topic for the day is uh, spirit of yajna see the term yajna is translated into english as sacrifice you will find in vedanta treatise and swamiji's commentary also this word is being used as sacrifice because there is no equivalent word in english for yajna probably this comes closest but we must understand what the uh, meaning conveys not only this there are various terms that are non translatables they have to be understood as they are we are not going into the details of it but terms like karma um brahman oh all these things must be used as they are they must not be understood in their english equivalent of let's say god or destiny or anything like that so similarly this yajna is also a, a word which is non translatable it has to be understood as it is though there are maybe indian words equivalent to that in other languages yajna is yajna so what is yajna by the term sacrifice we understand that one has to bring upon some difficulty to oneself for a particular reason and the term that is used in christianity denoting the sacrifices leading to the martyrdom of various uh, people in the initial days when christianity was being spread has a totally completely different meaning altogether and that is not what yajna represents here third and fourth chapter of gita krishna dedicates majority of the portion to this fabulous concept of yajna he introduces yajna in the ninth verse of third chapter where he says o arjuna the world is bound by actions other than those actions performed for the sake of yajna therefore you perform actions for the that same sake he says and he is telling arjuna about yajna in the battlefield that is very interesting so when he introduces the concept of yajna in third chapter which is the ninth verse of the third chapter he is actually encouraging arjuna to perform yajna knowing fully well the setup is to fight there the battlefield of kurukshetra is the setup there so obviously what we traditionally understand as yajna as a fire sacrifice the ritual of fire sacrifice or fire worship it still holds the meaning still holds but there seems to be a deeper meaning also added on to this word yajna here when krishna introduces the term not only that he goes on to say the next verse saha yajna praja srishtva puro vacha prajapati anena prasavishyatvam yesavo stvishta kamadu when prajapati the creator lord brahma created beings saha yajna saha yajna means he created the beings with yajna so yajna is as old as the beings okay yajna is that capacity we'll see that what it is but that capacity is there in human beings right from the very beginning and then he goes on to say as it were he gives yajna as a birthday gift to the beings and says anena prasavishyatvam yeshavo stvishta kamadu may this be the kamadenu kamadenu is the milk cow of in the heavens which will grant you whatever you desire for so whatever be your desire if you need to get it fulfilled 
this is the method and i am giving you that birthday gift which can be called as yagna so yagna is the kama denu with which we can fulfill all our desires this is the blessing of lord brahma himself the creator himself this is given in uh, gita and then in the next verse he goes on to say may you nourish the gods with this capacity to sacrifice which is yagna and they will bestow their blessings upon you you nourish the gods with this yagna and the gods will be pleased and they will bless you back parasparam bhavayantaha nourishing each other like this shreya parma vapsyata may both of you attain supreme good so he is giving this yagna as a link between the humans and the gods as it were and he says that may this yagna be the link between the humans and gods you nourish the gods with this yagna and the gods when pleased by the yagna will bestow their blessings back to you and then he goes on to say in the next verse if a person who is enjoying what is provided by the gods without contributing anything back to them obviously in the spirit of yagna without contributing anything back to them he is indeed a thief very powerful word he uses yo bungte stena eva saha dairdattan apradayebhya yo bungte stena eva saha stena means thief a very powerful word used in gita is so in other words all this series of verses goes on to prove the importance of acting in the spirit of yagna yagna is an action yagna is the highest form of action yagna is a purified action in the last class when we talked about dana we said that in the 18th chapter of gita when arjuna is asking about renunciation krishna says one set of thinkers say all actions need need to be renounced another set of people say the three types of actions should not be renounced because they are taking you towards the self in the path of evolution and those three are yagna dana and tapa austerity gift and yagna which is sacrifice so it is a very important form of action the highest form of action the most purified form of action is yagna and then this so what is this yagna what is the spirit of yagna yagna is nothing but when we talk about dealing with gods etc it is to understand that those actions which take you to the higher plane of consciousness which involves subjugating or sacrificing your ego in the process that can sort of give us an understanding of what yagna is yagna is those purifying actions by which you raise your plane of consciousness to a different level which is symbolized by you dealing with gods as it were in the process you are crushing your ego and elevating yourself to a higher level that constitutes in spirit what yagna is let us see you will find that this is the uh, picture that we get of yagna with slight variations here or there mostly this is what uh, yagna will be looking like as i said it is a age old vedic ritual till today it is being followed there may be slight variations in the way they are performed here or there but by and large it forms the same pattern that there is who is known as a yajamana or the person who is doing the sacrifice along with his wife these two are required as the main persons who are doing the yajna then you have a a kund or a square uh trough of a brick wall which is constructed in particular way as it is ordained in which fire is lighted fire is lit and into that fire 
the yajamana or the performer of the sacrifice has to pour oblations, give oblations. The oblations can be grains, the oblation can be ghee. It all depends on the type of ritual that they do, but some or the other oblation has to be there. This yajna involves priests sitting around the kund or the fire that is there. Mundaka Upanishad says, Ashta Dashoktam Avaram Heshu Karma. Ashta, do, Ashta Dashokta means there are 16 constituents of this yajna. So there are uh, four Vedas and there are four people uh, allotted to each of the Vedas sitting on all the sites. Technically, they are called as Hota, Advaryu, Udgata, Hota for Rigveda, Advaryu for Ejurveda, Udgata for Sama Veda and Subramanya for the Atharva Veda. One priest is the main. There are three people assisting him. Four into four, sixteen. The, the main performer, Ejamana and his wife, put together sixteen plus two is eighteen. These are, this is the traditional Vedic constitution of the Ajna. But we find that there are priests that are sitting there. And the important aspect of Ajna ritual also, we find that they, they chant mantras. Mantras are the way by which the gods are invoked in the yajna. And then not only, is, this is the main or essential aspect of the yajna, there are other participants who are invited for the yajna, they are all closely associated with the people who are doing, who have a value for this ritual and who are worth inviting, they are also invited for the yajna. Everybody also contributes something to the yajna. See, it is like um, when you conduct a marriage in your house, that is also a sort of, uh, there also, of course, these uh, rituals are involved, but that is also a function, a yajna that is happening. You invite all the relatives, friends, whoever is a stakeholder, and why do we invite them? We invite them because it is a sacred activity, it's a holy activity that marriage is taking place as a union between two individuals to go to the next level of forming a family for which everybody comes and makes their presence felt by giving them the blessings. And it is a happy celebratory occasion. Various other things are also involved there. Song and dance will be involved there. Various things are involved there. But essentially they are coming there to give us the blessings. But they, none of them who come, they come empty-handed. They do bring some sort of a gift or they do some sort of uh, help or whatever it is, they bring something with them to that. Exactly like that, for Ajna also, everybody brings in something or the other. And at the end of it, something or the other is given to them back also. As a remnant of the sacrifice, it is shared with them. Like we see in the modern way, any function has a return gift. So whatever they Give, bring also a gift and the return gift is given or whatever it is. It could be a palm that is given as a end of the function also, but something is given back also. What is to be understood here very carefully is there is a commerce involved in the Ajna. There is a give and take involved in the Ajna. There is a quid pro quo or a give and take that is involved, surely. But the spirit of the Ajna is not commercial. This has to be very clearly understood. Ajna involves commerce, but commercial spirit is not the spirit of Ajna. Ajna spirit is something else. Ajna spirit is to elevate everybody's consciousness to the higher level. In that process, there are certain commerces involved in it, which is inevitable and which is essential also. So everybody brings something also to the uh, Ajna. As the mantra is being done and the ahuti is given to the god, everybody walks uh, and finally when the purna ahuti, they say when the uh, culmination happens, all are also asked to take certain grains or certain portion of the, uh, the fuel that is added into the fire. Uh, that ahuti, they are also thinking of the god, they come in a circumambulating way which is called as pradakshina in a clockwise direction. They offer that into the fire and main aspect of the Ajna is that when the offering happens, the shooting up of the fire is there. 
the shooting up of the fire is taken as the blessing so they worship the fire god and they proceed along even today even as these things might be done without understanding the meaning also it doesn't matter still i would say we should continue with the rituals what we may call as mechanical rituals even today as people are standing in the queue to come around the fire and offer whatever they have to offer also they may still talk uh, or gossip among themselves about politics or movie or sports or stock market or anything but when the actual offering comes that time comes for a moment they stop they put it and they close their eyes pray and then they continue along the way so there is a deep connection involved when the it, it is exactly the same thing like how we stand in the queue uh, in in the in the for the darshan in the temple the tirupati balaji or vaishnava devi or any temple that you stand uh, not that everybody is extremely focused on the thought of god even as they are standing in the queue because it may take hours together they may do various other talkings various other thoughts may come along the way but when they come to the climax of having the darshan they close their eyes and for that moment they forget themselves and pour themselves out into that supreme lord there exactly same way happens in the yagna also because it is the god who is invoked there in the fire so they every participant does that and the main stakeholder here is the yajamana who is the conductor or performer of the sacrifice like this when the entire grains or the ghee everything is poured out into the fire ultimately the purna hoti the final thing is also poured out lastly what is left in the kund after the entire thing is burnt up like ash it is that ash is distributed as a prasad to everybody also and that is what we smear on the forehead it is some form of that some ash we smear on the forehead then they may sing a song or uh, visit a temple and the yajna ritual is concluded as i said there may be slight variations here or there in the technical details but by and large this is the format of the yajna what is interesting is this yajna ritual in the time of mahabharata in the time of bhagavad gita krishna says see veda vyasa says in uh, bhagavad gita to arjuna in the battlefield that you must work in the spirit of yajna so obviously when he is talking about yajna there yes it in, it is directly relating to the fire worship that we understand but the very fact that the setup is a battle ground also means that there is a deeper significance to that fire worship so it is not merely the fire worship fire worship included but there seems to be a deeper meaning also there so the spirit of yajna is something else in other words it is proven now by telling arjuna that he can perform yajna in the battlefield means we all can perform yajna wherever we are whatever actions we do and that is what is very encouraging otherwise why is bhagavad gita or age old ritual like yajna relevant for us now it is interesting how swami ramatirtha approaches this as a very young boy maybe at the age of 23 i think swami ramatirtha gives out a very powerful emotional talk lecture in pushkar the pushkar is incidentally the great yajna bhumi where it is said that lord brahma himself has conducted the yajna it is coincidental or we do not know whether it was planned there he gives a lecture on yajna spirit of yajna very powerful lecture i would recommend those who have the works of swami ramadeva turn to volume 2 spirit of yajna one of the most powerful lectures where he pours his heart out to 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 the gathering there and to the indians in general as to how we must maintain the spirit of yajna in that he traces back as to how this yajna itself came about as we said it is right from the time immemorial it is there always so it has been a age old ritual we cannot really say when it all started if you can understand uh, when veda started it is from the same time because it is according to the mantras given in the vedas that these yajnas are also conducted because the karma kanda portion of the veda is the bulk portion so yajna is also that way a time immemorial it is 
so he says in the good old days remember that the actions that we do now which is called as worldly actions it is called in sanskrit as laukik actions laukik mean loka means world laukik means worldly actions worldly actions as we understand now are we understand as separate from what is known as religious actions those actions uh, which is involving your spirituality or uh, uh, maybe you will say you are studying of gita going to a temple all those things are spiritual religious actions and that i have to do my work in the world to earn money to take care of my family i consider that as uh, mundane actions and most of the people in most parts of the world are now involved in mainly worldly actions we are involved in mundane spiritual mundane activities uh, without any connection to spirituality as it were in the good old days there were no such thing as worldly actions separate it was combined with what is known as smarta karma they, see there are two types of karma in religious activity they talk about one is known as shrauta karma another is known as smarta karma shrauta means based on shruti or the vedas smarta means based on smriti or those smritis which are interpretations of the vedas given to us in later date by rishis for the help of people at that particular point of time so the smarta karma included worldly activities also it is not that in the good old days people were not uh, doing their worldly activities or not taking care of their family or they were not involved uh, uh, in wealth creation or anything like that everything was done but separately as a worldly action segregated from the spiritual actions was not considered at all and what brought about this change he says it is the uh war of mahabharata when it was fought and maybe we can say a period of 5000 years back or so uh it uh, changed the structure of the society in a different way altogether where people became more materialistic in nature and the life revolved around first their sustenance in terms of their worldly things and then they were also doing the other rituals but this took precedence and from that he says there is a, a different direction in the attitude of people also as they approached karma so then there is uh, spiritual actions and worldly actions also but much prior to that much before that people were very well content as far as their worldly needs are concerned what are the basic essential needs for us you can think in terms of ro roti kapda makan is the main thing roti is the food kapda is the cloth makan is the place that you see these are basic requirements for anybody for that matter all other things are based on this one you need food to sustain yourself you need clothes to cover yourself up you need a shelter where you can be slightly secure that's all imagine if people were ready to eat whatever is provided by nature in abundance directly it could be fruits it could be whatever it is providing and they are ready to even cover themselves with whatever is again naturally available like that to that extent he is saying to that extent even the basic things that is required people were not really concerned about that they were very satisfied with what was available shelter wherever simple thing that they used to live uh, he says even uh, like caves and other places were there they were they were there so if person is not even if this is not indifference this is not tamas that you have to understand in a way that uh, they are okay with whatever is provided and they are extremely satisfied with that but what happens to all their pent up energy that is within them they use that energy to deal with gods as it were and that is where he says the yajna started so the spirit of yajna is that it revolved around a big if there it is not that they wanted something but it is said if you want this you do this if you want to rain then you propitiate indra in this way and that particular again that rain is there if you want progeny this is the way to you you get it that is why uh, uh, geeta says it is a birthday gift for you you want to anything to fulfill your desire there is a method to it there is a way to it there is a technology that is associated with this and this technology used your mind and intellect it used the other aspects of the world in supplement of that so it's a technology that's a technique that is given by which you can directly deal with the powers that are there and you can get it fulfilled it's very interesting 
So they were doing it that way. Therefore, he says, Ajna was revolving around a big if. If you want that, you do that. It's not compulsory. It is optional upon you as it were. But after, as we discussed about the uh, change of the structure of the society post the Mahabharata war, it was no more an option and it did not revolve around a if. It was that I want it and therefore I'll do this. I want wealth and I have to do this. So the, the spirit becomes more of wanting, more of commercialization happened and it, still it is a technique that can be used to fulfill it. That's how it happened. This he is talking about how the way in which Yajna was used. Let us come back to this fire ritual. As we said, priests are chanting mantra. Next time any Ajna happens in your own house or nearby temple, you carefully observe what mantras they are chanting. Any mantra that they can chant, propitiating whichever god for whatever purpose it is, it could be for your new house that you are doing or a new factory that you are doing or a marriage that you are doing or child's first uh, eating of food that you are doing, whatever it is. You can do uh, Ajna because everything is as as far as our life is concerned, everything is a spiritual activity. Therefore, there is a touch of divinity in everything. And they will invoke that particular God with that particular mantra. They will be doing everything. But you carefully note the mantra. Every mantra will be ending with a great swaha. Swaha is where you offer, as it were, into that uh, fire. And after immediately saying swaha, what they will say is, idam na mama. So they say, suppose, in they offer it to Indra, let us say, they will say Indraya Swaha. Indraya Swaha means, I am offering it to Indra. Immediately they will say Indraya, Idam Namama. Idam Namama means, it is not for me. Vishnave Swaha. It is for Vishnu. Vishnave Idam Namama. It is not for me. Rudraya Pashupataye Swaha. For Rudra, for Shankara, for God, Lord Shiva. Rudraya Pashupataye Idam Namama. Idam Namama, again, not for me. So this is one important aspect that we need to note in uh, in, in uh, Yajna is that the spirit of Yajna is to offer wholeheartedly to the gods without the participation of my ego that I am expecting anything in return of it at my mental level. Be careful in understanding this because the purpose of Yajna, the Sankalpa is there. Suppose I say, if you want rain, if you want uh, progeny, if you want house, if you want gold, if you want wife, if you want if, if, if. So therefore, even now today, if there is a strong sankalpa as to certain things that you require, you need to keep that sankalpa sharply focused and that is why you take that sankalpa in the very beginning. You have to be very clear of what you want. Right? That is given as the sankalpa in the beginning. But when the actual idnya happens, you say, idam na mama. Whatever I am offering is for the gods, idam, not for me, not for me. This will capture the spirit of Ignya. The spirit of Ignya is that you have to oblige everything to the higher powers, higher state of consciousness and not arrogating anything to your individual self. This we see naturally happening in the world. The minerals give themselves up and that is what is making the plants grow. That is a yajna happening there actually. We may say they are unconsciously doing whatever it is. It is inbuilt science of the nature. The minerals gives them up for the plants. The plants give them up for the animals. And the animals give them up for the sake of human beings. In whichever way they are working, it is in the spirit of yajna. Be it ox and bull working, be it... Uh, uh, a horse working for us, be it um, even the crow clearing up the garbage. Uh, you may say it is eating its food, but in the spirit of Yajna is what the whole world is designed. Each and every animal, each and every insect, each and every germ, each and every worm is doing its earthworm, it's doing whatever it is doing for the sake of us, like that it is. So, it is all inbuilt into the nature that everything must happen in the spirit of Yajna. When it comes to human being, as we discussed when we talked about ego, only human being has this capacity to stand apart from the totality and assert his ego consciously. Therefore, he is advised to do the actions in the spirit of Ignya by which his ego is getting dissolved. 
and that is why yajna is a purifying action yajna is not not just chanting mantra and putting something into the fire if you understand the spirit of it it is a great way of working great way of working is this yajna so when you say idam namama it is not for me it is for the god what does it signify what does this god signify lord indra let us say is a is the god of your hands sun god is the god of your eyes moon god is the god of your heart if you are able to visualize the totality as a vishwarupa as a virat purusha or the cosmic entity all these cosmic powers which make the universe function are to be considered as the parts of the totality only so if you are able to visualize the universe as a one big conscious entity who are the eyes the sun is the eye isn't it sun is that which is making everybody see and therefore it is the eye of the totality in the same way indra is the hand of the totality in the same way moon is the heart of the totality like that each and every god is to be visualized like that they are not separate from that supreme reality which is brahman the angi or the entity is that supreme reality which manifests itself as these various powers so what is this individual doing this individual as a human being who has a separate ego of himself that i stand separate from the totality yajna is merging that individuality into the totality through the process of oblating this is the spirit of yajna therefore if you are offering to indra you are saying my hand which is working for me and considering only for myself i offer it to that universal hand which is indra by which let it be of use to the totality so you are sacrificing your selfishness you are sacrificing your ego and you are opening up to totality the same action that you may do whether you do in a factory whether you do in an office whether you do work in the kitchen when you are invoking the spirit of yajna the same action becomes a purified action like this if you are extending your eye to the total eye then you are doing sacrifice when you extend your mind to the cosmic mind then you are doing sacrifice so yajna is nothing but a way by which our individuality is dissolved into the totality that conscious practice when you bring it into your system by way in which the ritual is given then you are practicing it now coming back to gita when krishna says perform yajna therefore arjuna also can perform yajna by what by fighting in the battlefield he takes a personal stance in the beginning of the battle that it is uh, my grandfather and my uh, guru and my cousins and how will i kill them he looks at it from a totally uh, personal angle that is why there is a emotional collapse that is happening so first lesson that he gives because the second chapter is krishna shakes him up with the totality uh, or the highest uh, knowledge of uh, brahma vidya the real gita for arjuna starts with third and fourth chapter therefore the first lesson is only yajna third and fourth chapter elaborate yajna like uh, no varies it is a, it's a wonderful portion third and fourth chapter which talks about uh, the yajna so tadartham karma gauteye mukta sankha samachara perform actions for the sake of yajna renouncing all attachment he says this is the first lesson that he uh, that he gives so if a person is fighting being a kshatriya it is duty to fight that war that war how will you fight that is the spirit of yajna so let us come back to the spoon here this can be therefore symbolically taken as how we can perform our actions as i said in the present modern day context how is yajna relevant we are all we can say mundane doing ritual what you call uh, worldly activities no gita is relevant today also because it says you can convert your mundane activity into worship your normal household and office and corporate activities also can be converted into worship that is yajna so what does this pun represent therefore the pun represents the field of activity any field of activity that is there is the Uh, is represented by the kund or the square rough of brick walls which is the main aspect of the yajna so for a person who is working in the office the office itself is the kund 
for a person who is working in the kitchen the kitchen itself is the kun for a cricketer who is playing in the field the eden gardens or the field is the kun for the politician um, who are uh, ruling the country through parliament parliament is the kun whichever area of activity your office whatever you uh, perform in, even here what we do as a virtual classroom this classroom is the kun any activity that you do that is the kun what is the fire fire is the main objective for which the action is done in the office profit potential is the aim you run an office for profit a charitable trust running various things that doing charitable activity is the main thing but a person who is running a commercial organization the main thing is not uh, charity he can be charitable with the proceeds that are coming out of the business that is different but the dharma of the business is to earn profit therefore the profit potential this must be very clear for the yajamana that, that is what is important before the yajna it must be very clear as to what is the purpose of the activity so the fire that is lit up there represents the 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 major aim the so as in the case of office that i said is the profit potential if a person is playing cricket in the field it is that uh, team victory there uh, or uh, india winning what are the world cup that that must be clear that is the potential that is what he is working for who are all the participants all the people who are directly involved in the working there in a spirit of team work so yajna is actually uh, teaching us team work isn't it every yajna has every activity that we do in this world has to have the participation of all the people most of most people in most ways are contributing to it. just as think about even this uh, small class that we are having how many people have contributed thousands not thousands millions um i am not talking about just the people who are sitting on the other side and listening and the person who is talking here that is obviously required if nobody is there who will i talk to but uh, there is a person who has contributed to the technology here there is a person who has contributed to the knowledge here that we are and that knowledge has come from a series of guru parampara and that knowledge up to till our guru is being in given in unbroken chain and the language that we are using is english which is not our contribution in any way that has been given you know, by millions and millions of people who have evolved the language over a period of time and then there is a person who has let us say helped us construct the house where we are at the comfort of it sitting and listening like this you take any simple silly action also millions are involved in the action so to consciously make everybody participate in the action with their individual effort but with the spirit of teamwork is the idea so for the office a typist will bring so everybody brings i said said something for the idea they bring their talent a typist bring type, typing talent or a software engineer brings his talent accountant brings his talent managing director brings his talent and uh, sales person brings his talent like that it is when they are offering their actions into that activity of the organization with what spirit do they offer that is the question a sales person in a company is doing the same action he is going to get the same salary but his attitude can be twofold he can think in terms of how i can improve my salary or he can genuinely think in terms of how i can improve the sales of the company action is the same maybe the result is the same maybe the salary is the same everything is the same but what makes all the difference is the attitude of the person in the first case he is thinking in terms of what am i getting out of this in the second case he is thinking in terms of how can i contribute to this that's all make the difference so karma yoga is definitely not changing the action but changing the attitude behind the action remember this people think that i will leave all my activity and then start doing karma yoga after uh, retirement all that is not uh, uh, you have to imagine uh, or understand this uh, the background of gita arjuna is wanting to run away from action and krishna is pulling back into action therefore gita is telling us how to do action how to do action means any action that you are doing at any stage of life how to do that action properly that makes it karma yoga so karma becomes karma yoga when you change the attitude behind the action 
when you are offering that action you are thinking na mama not for me how can i genuinely work for the welfare of the company how can i work for the welfare of the community how see a person can be just producing a small nut or bolt in the factory there it's a small activity why are you doing this only if i do this from 9 to 5 i'll get some salary i can run my family kripana phala hetavah again says geeta kripana means pitiable person he has lowered his status if a person says that he has to work for from 9 to 5 just to earn some money to run his family he says you are actually lowering your status you are not living up to your own prestige or dignity animals are doing that without working like that they are also taking care of their family with all the education that we do and we join an office and we work non stop from morning till evening only to say that we take care of the family like this you can say that and it's not wrong but it is not up to your potential you are not performing the actions in the right way rather you can perform it in a much much better way he thinks in terms of this uh, is contribution uh, to the his his own factory or his own company being number 1 in india or whatever it is that is a different thing or he thinks in terms of that product that he does is going to be useful in a great uh, machinery a great uh, equipment in building of great building or a, a building a train whatever it is he is visualizing his action as a contribution for a great development that is yajna so yajna is to convert that same activity into a different level altogether what happens then then the question arises so what will happen to me this question will come if i think in terms of others and i am doing this activity what will happen to me you are included in the totality don't worry about it this is the fundamental mistake that people do they are thinking that when we work for others our welfare is not taken care of the truth is just the opposite your welfare is taken care of only when you work for others and you are included in that bigger circle you take the history of any uh, person you are your own known people in your own family or your known persons in the history whoever is able to identify with a larger circle and they are able to work for them with dedicated interest genuinity they are well taken care of much more than what is required for them this is the law the law is that you work for the higher lower is taken care of but the spirit of them is not that they work for them that is that is where the slight difference is people who even sacrifice their uh, lives for the sake of nation what a elevated status that they are say they are still living living amongst us they will never never ever be uh, forgotten they will never ever uh, in fact they have made themselves as ahuti or offering into the fire of what is known as the nation so so this is the difference when i started in the beginning i said this is a difference between what how the term sacrifices is understood in the in the uh, christian way and the yajna this is what it is it can involve your life being taken up also but the spirit here is to elevate yourself to a different level of consciousness we see that uh, when uh, bhagat singh and others were uh, raj guru were uh, about to be hanged they were able to face the death without any fear and they were having the bhagavad gita book in their pocket is uh, what we understand so they are able to elevate themselves to such a level that they are able to face death how it is possible death is the greatest fear how is it possible this is the spirit of yajna so yajna makes you rise about your individual consciousness to whatever level you can aspire for it could be family it could be a community it could be a company it could be our country it could be any circle that you identify with the spirit in which you are able to raise above your individual consciousness and work in a spirit of cooperative endeavor each and every person has to contribute his thing only but the spirit is the team work each and every person contributes it's very interesting even with you or without you the work is going to happen but what you must do you must do your part in that spirit of let me do it for totality the episode of uh, lord krishna lifting up the govardhan uh, mountain in a way symbolizes this the story is that uh, krishna stops the sacrifice or the uh, worship that they do to indra and instead he uh, makes the uh, the villagers uh, sacrifice and worship uh, to the mountain govardhan because he says this is mountain is what is providing us all 
nourishment it brings us the clouds it brings us the rain it brings us the produce everything they having that simple mind and full faith in krishna they do it and indra is angry indra um, orders that the entire clouds should burst and rain should happen and for 7 days non stop the entire rain is pouring there only and everybody take refuge under krishna and uh, he says govardhana mountain uh, whom we have worship must protect us and therefore he lifts the mountain and everybody takes shelter there he is holding the uh, mountain with his little finger this is the famous picture everybody would have seen also in the process seven days is the process that they are there in the process one is to understand the innocence of the people there and to enjoy the episode as it is they are saying uh, krishna is standing on a small rock and he is holding the mountain everybody with their cows and everybody is there very innocently some of them are saying krishna you must, you are holding it for so long it must be painful for you we will also hold krishna smiles and because that this is we may call it ignorance we may call but this is actually bhakti this is extreme bhakti he appreciates it and he encourages also he says so you are cowherds you have your uh, you have your staff you also hold the mountain along with me it's okay he says so they also do that what the, what does this episode the signify the entire mountain is getting held up by the strength of krishna as it were right it is his power that is holding the mountain yet he encourages everybody to hold their staff and say you also do it you also hold it it is not because of their staff or their strength that one inch of that mountain is also holding in other words if krishna were to release his power by even 0.0001% the whole mountain will collapse on that okay the entire thing is upon his strength only but everybody is encouraged to do this as though they are holding it this is the spirit of ajna even with you or without you the whole thing is set in motion it will function that is why in the culmination of the series of verses in third chapter he says after he says about uh, uh, that you are a thief then he talks about how uh, uh, brahman stands in the fulcrum of yajna he gives the agricultural metaphor we don't have time to go into that but i'm saying very beautiful portion then he says evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartayati hayaha like this if a person who, who does not fit into the motion uh, into the chakram into the wheel that is set in motion the wheel that is set in motion as to how brahman becomes individual and individual becomes brahman and the whole universe is functioning based on yajna if somebody is not able to fit into that motion he says aghayur indriya ramaha mogam parthasa jeevati he is wasting his time mogam in vain his life is in total waste he is wasting his time so with or without you the chakra is running with or without you the orchestra is going to function you play your part in the orchestra in tune with the total music there that's all it is so the spirit of yajna is to align yourself into that total last time we said in charity there are different types of giving that is there so that elevates us again into the spirit of yajna here chapter 4 verse 28 talks about we have a gita class and this is the verse we stopped it's one of the best portions of gita uh 12 yajnas are being discussed there verse 28 says dravya yajna tapo yajna yoga yajna tata pare swadhyaya jnana yajna cha yataya samshita vrata he gives four yajnas four types of yajnas there in the order of grossness to subtlety the four types of yajna given in this verse are dravya yajna dravya yajna dravya literally means grains grains are the fundamental units of measurement and they are may be used to barter also so when you are giving grain you are giving wealth so the least form of charity that you can do the least form of yajna that you can do is to offer your wealth to others we talked about charity in the last class you have to minimum start with parting with money material gift nothing that you are uh, uh, doing you are you are you are parting with what you have as excess that attitude of sharing what you have as excess for the welfare of others is what is known as dravya yajna you are invoking the basic uh, fundamental things that are required for them in the other side and you are invoking their happiness in that way 
See, Ajna, as I said, Parasparam Bhavayantaha. It brings up a mutual benefit for both. You uh, propitiate gods and gods bless you. It is like that. Chris. So, when you are doing it, elevates you. Definitely, we saw that the charity elevates the donor and it elevates the recipient also. That is the right type of gift. So, Dravya Ajna is the material gift which is the minimum thing that we need to begin with. At the next level is Tapo Yajna. Tapo Yajna, Tapas means concerted effort. Here it can be taken as the Yajna that we do at the physical level. To do your donation is one thing. To do your material charity is one thing. But to do something, giving your time and energy is at a higher level. That is why even when we do the yajna, even uh, now uh, also there is going to be this global Guru Purnima event by Swamiji which we talked about uh, in the last class. Even the Gita lectures that are being conducted Traditionally, we call it as Jnana Yajna. Jnana Yajna means sacrifice of knowledge. Knowledge it is. Yajna. It is a Yajna where everybody participates and contributes. So, the role of the speaker is to come and give the knowledge. That is her contribution to the Yajna or his contribution to the Yajna. The organizer has to be the fulcrum organizing the Yajna. The people who can give money, that is their contribution to the Yajna. The people who do physical activities for uh, arranging the tables and the lecture hall and everything, that is their contribution. People who are able to publicize, market, put up hoardings and other things, that is their contribution. In this, what happens is that there is a lot of uh, pooling of funds and wealth and other resources also. And at the end of it, everything gets distributed to everybody also. Knowledge is getting distributed and that is symbolized by the end of the Ajna, you give a Guru Prashad also. Prashad is distributed of that. Ash is distributed, food is distributed at the end of the Ajna. All this is symbolic of the distribution only. So in that we say, at one level, whatever you can do, you do uh, as a donation. You give a check for the Ajna, which is fine. But those who can do it, we put it in the next level that you say, don't just uh, give your uh, contribution. Ask your friends, ask your known people who, who are in corporate, who are in other places, ask them to contribute. So this person will say, sir, whatever it is, I may give a little more, but you know, it's difficult to ask. Uh, let me give this. No, this is not for the sake of just collecting more money. It must be taken as a spirit for you to do the Ajna at the next level. What happens when you ask others money? Others may reject. Yeah, nobody wants to, let's say, one out of ten may give. Doesn't matter. And it involves a lot of venting your ego and asking from others. A whole aspect or whole purpose of Ajna, we said, is to dissolve your ego. So to say that, no, no, I will do whatever I want, you need not boost your ego like this. That is why for Ajna, everybody should come in together and perform. Others may give or not give, that is up to them. But what harms or what is stopping you from asking them? In fact, you must be taking it as a spirit by which you are venting your ego and asking the other person. You are performing a Ajna, this is Tapo Ajna. So you do your part in material Ajna, which is to give your material contribution. But when you are asking from others, you are doing a Tapo Ajna. A lady of the house is suddenly informed by the husband that somebody is coming and she needs to prepare uh, food for uh, 10 people. So morning, this is given and uh, afternoon or evening they are going to come means it's, it's not an easy job. So the neighbor may send one dish, that is one way of helping. Another way is to come in the house and work with that lady, cut the vegetables or various do, various other things, prepare it and then silently leave also. In second case, it is a superior idea. It is giving our time, giving our energy, that is tapo idea. So beyond the material level is the physical service. Your, uh, your physical work you are giving, your time you are giving, which is much more important much greater than that, much subtler than that is Yoga Yajna. Yoga Yajna is the offering of emotions, knowledge. Yoga is union 
for the union with the self at a higher level if you are able to invoke their emotions and knowledge which we may include here as yes worldly knowledge also that involves greater spirit of ajna from you it's very simple you can give only what you have unless you have deep emotions how can you give emotions how can you invoke that in others unless you have knowledge how will you do it to others so one thing is to give to the people money it will help them for a while but if you are giving them knowledge by which they can sustain themselves and stand down their own feet that's a greater thing so this involves lot more tapas on your side it involves dedicating your life for others in such a way so there are people who just give their time talking to people who are let us say without any relatives just to give that emotion to them so you can say i'll give some money but you know uh, let them let somebody do this you will say but it's not very easy because you need to have that type of uh, emotion or you teach children certain knowledge who cannot afford school or something you give your time in lighting up their knowledge that is yoga yajna and then at the last at the highest of them all it is very ironical it says swadhyaya gnana yajna imagine you are giving and giving and he is talking about higher giving and higher giving and higher giving money you give physical service you give your time you give your emotions you give your knowledge you give your intellect you give what more can you give he says swadhyaya gnana yajna swadhyaya means self study at the culmination of it all he says just shut yourself in the room and do self study man self study here involves studying of the scriptures what is given in vedantic literature and evoking the self from within what is the highest form of giving highest form of giving is to give yourself away complete dissolution of your ego it is he who does this does the greatest service to the world it's very uh, what do you call a powerful thought swami ramtirtha explains it very scientifically as though when it comes to the last level we think that uh, other things are very clear in understanding what you are giving and there is a tangible maybe a measurable result out of it also finally he says don't worry you just study reflect meditate realize the self to that extent he says and you have to understand this comes in this order you somebody cannot suddenly go go to that level also but we must some day sometime reach this level what is it that we are giving here when you give yourself away like this you are actually elevating the whole world that is the greatest service that anybody can do all the great masters till today have done only this service as the greatest service and the effect of which is standing till today how how does this work how can give you give yourself away this when you are able to sacrifice this individual self in the supreme self that is when you are invoking the spirituality in others also whatever see ramtirtha lived a very short uh, span of life shankaracharya did uh, lived a very short span of life but whatever they have given whatever they have performed as yajna and sacrifice is standing till today elevating all of us and it will continue for generations to come also what they have done they have just connected themselves to the supreme self once they have done that they are able to pull themselves up how is it possible imagine a iron piece this iron piece which when connected to electricity creates a electromagnetic field around it so it acts like a magnet so this iron piece therefore is able to attract all other iron pieces so that all other iron pieces also gain to that extent so much power that they attract other pieces also towards it all this is happening because of the original iron piece being connected to the electricity so when by swadhyaya gnana yajna by studying the scriptures and associating yourself with the self within you are actually elevating yourself and making yourself electrified by the self knowledge when you create a electrical field around yourself by this brahma vidya by this atma vidya you create a vacuum by which everybody is attracted towards you so the greatest service that you do is raise yourself from your position towards that infinity you create a vacuum when you create a vacuum what happens just as the monsoon winds blow from blow from high pressure area to low pressure area to fill up the vacuum 
whenever you create a vacuum anywhere others from the lower level are already are automatically elevated to fill up that therefore you are elevating others by swadhyaya gnana yajna that is the greatest thing when you you imagine a big table which is made up of so many parts and it is assembled together now it is a big table you catch one corner of the table small portion of the table pull the table it, it is not that that only that portion comes the entire table moves exactly like that you are connected to the totality whether you understand it or not like it or not or you believe it or not when you elevate yourself at the higher pedestal automatically the totality also moves with you therefore what is the highest level of sacrifice that anybody can do it is swadhyaya jnana yajna and probably we need to talk about sattvic rajasik tamasik and all but we don't have time uh, we will take it up in some future class whenever we get a chance but before we conclude uh, and take up uh, questions i will remind you of this only that uh, whatever uh, an event that is coming of swami ji's uh, guru punima event or anything any event for that matter we have to approach it with that uh, spirit of yajna only irrespective of whatever it is our contribution to that must be in the spirit of what i can do it to this uh, to this totality when you are able to do it in the spirit of cooperative endeavor you are performing in yajna as i said what activity you do does not matter but in what spirit you do with what attitude you do that becomes a yajna yeah that's it we um, we open it now for questions so if anybody has a question they can uh, unmute and ask uh can you hear me guru ji who is yeah meenakshi tell me so it's about the yoga yagna you spoke yeah, yeah. it's a, you said it's emotional support and giving knowledge and dedicating your life for others so did, without the last yagna which is swadhyaya gyana yagna how can you give knowledge to others correct when we talk about as i said this knowledge can be taken at the worldly level so suppose you are uh teaching uh, worldly knowledge mathematics and technical knowledge to others where okay. probably you can use that time to build your own uh, assets or capital but you are building let us say a group of students by this and you do it in that spirit of yajna you are you are actually offering them and you are elevating their status to uh, in the world to stand on their own legs so that becomes a uh, yajna also even as you give spiritual knowledge to others as a group discussion and as the as a way by which we transact even scriptures that can fall into it but swadhyaya gnana yajna is the spirit by which we approach this so each and everything has to be approached in the in the spirit of self development and self evolution then we perform yajna at whatever level we are in fact we can simultaneously do everything also you can give material gift you can do tapo yajna to that extent you can do yoga yajna also but do not leave the swadhyaya that is the base with which you can do so with the knowledge of vedanta we have to perform all the yajna okay all right uh, goji i had one more question when you said that you know the 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 uh, the cooperative endeavor of towards contributing towards a bigger yagna or a event and you said that it's not about contributing the money yourself it's also about uh, putting your ego aside and asking others for money correct Guruji, the the problem that I see in that is when when we even when we put our ego aside and ask others for money, uh, I think you are judged that you are fanatically following something and you want someone else to follow it, and you know, knowledge is never given; it's taken. Something like that. I just feel very. Uh, 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 I I don't feel good forcing somebody or telling somebody, uh, not forcing. It's a wrong word. Uh, I just feel if they need to gain the knowledge, they'll come and pay and take the knowledge. So what is the conflict here in my mind? I can't. No, no, no. You, you, the confusion arises as to the ultimately boils down to no. As you said, nobody is forcing anybody to give or uh, to come to the lectures or any also because knowledge can never be uh, given. it has to be taken that is clear i am saying from you treat it as yajna from your standpoint how does it matter whether that person uh, understands you or misunderstands you that is his problem as long as you are convinced with the cause based on your conviction you have to do whatever is best suited 
obviously the method by which you will do is according to the person according to the situation you may use diplomacy somewhere you may use somebody else to ask all that that comes at the level of the intellect to think and do how it can be done but you have to deeply think as to generally what prevents a person from doing this it can be uh, thinking in terms of how will the other person think uh, about me or am i just uh, pushing them for more money or something like that what will he uh, say let them come let that not uh, come in the way of our relationship something like that all this finally boils down to my ego nothing else so you have to take it in. when you are deeply convinced about a cause the way in which you can contribute you have to do one extra step more than that as it is as i said it's easy for people to give from their pocket so that is done that is that is taken for granted at the next level when you want to go that is where the tapoyagnya comes i said so definitely tapoyagnya is much difficult somebody will say let me give all the contribution also please leave me because that very fact that i cannot ask so in fact in one uh, time when yagnya came uh, when swami chinmayananda uh, did the yagnya he used to always form a committee or a team and make them even though one person may be the major contributor he says let the committee be that team be that you still no he says anyway i am doing it i will do it i will print the cards i will do everything he said no no you still form a committee and do it let it be worked under a, uh, a banner or a flag or something like that and ultimately he didn't agree for the person to do it he says the main purpose is not that somebody can contribute 5 crores instead of 50 lakhs also they may be able to do it but the main purpose of vigna is to bend your ego and do it in a collective and cooperative endeavor in the very beginning of it if you are going to assert your ego you are you are defeating the purpose so you are approach somebody may not have any money they are just doing xerox uh, they are doing or they are typing something and uh, doing they are also doing the yagna so in whichever way whatever way you can contribute think about the next level and you attempt to it. your attempt is important as i said what will come out of it whether that person um, gives or not gives that is all not in our hands results is not in our hands but your effort to do is therefore uh, is the elevating action for you you are performing yagna from your level it is actually helping me bend my ego bend my ego. making me uh, reach a level higher while doing the yagna so right. giving contributing yourself is the lowest level yes bending your ego and asking someone else is a higher level is higher that's yeah. all and whatever reason uh, one give to the mind it is about ego i mean it is, uh, it is about ego finally that's why yagna is that which purifies uh, ego or it makes you transcend the ego that's why the most uh, best form of action thank you so much Ramesh, I had a question. Who's uh, the Yabasha? Ramesh, you uh, you men, uh, mentioned the word Yajamana. Yeah. So that's the yeah. person who is conducting conducting the yajna. Correct. Right. So when an individual is uh, working, let's say in a company, uh, who will be considered Yajamana? He, uh, the chairman of the company is the Yajamana as far as that corporation is concerned. Like that. Okay. Who is the main person oh. who is initiating that? Who is uh, grossly oh, responsible for it? Uh, that is. Can you mute yourself? Uh, yeah. So that person is the uh, yajamana here. So like that in every agnya, there is a uh, there is a person who is majorly initiating that. You know. So that person is the yajamana. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachyate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate, Om.